Hi, I'm Jimmy. In this video, we're looking at Lowe's, ticker symbol L-O-W. This video is part of our Dividend Aristocrats series, where we're analyzing each of the companies in the Dividend Aristocrats ETF with the goal of seeing if we can find the top dividend paying dividend aristocrat stocks that have a good chance of paying us a reliable dividend over the coming years. Ultimately, trying to get us closer to our personal goal of financial freedom. Okay, let's look quickly at Lowe's dividend since we're only reviewing this company because they're part of the dividend aristocrats ETF. Now, I'm sure most of us are not surprised that their dividend history has been pretty awesome over the past few years. And when we look at analyst estimates going forward, well, it looks like analysts are expecting for the dividends to continue to grow. Analyst estimates are the green bars. Okay, so that was somewhat expected. Now our question is, how does Lowe's business look? And what do we think Lowe's stock is worth? And ultimately, do we think that Lowe's is one of the top dividend aristocrats within the NOBL ETF? So let's start with a few basics. How about we start with revenue first? This is Lowe's revenue going back to 2012. And clearly, they've done a decent job of growing, and analysts are expecting for that growth to continue over the next few years. Then when we switch over to net income, which is the same thing as profits, well, net income has also done a good job of growing. But we may notice that net income has more than doubled since 2012, which is impressive considering that revenue over that very same time period was up just 41%, which isn't bad at all, but it's not more than 100%. And I'm sure once we realize that this happened, there's only one good place to look, and that is at net income margins. So this is net income margins on a percentage basis going back the past few years. And a few things probably jump on us here. One, net income margins are kind of low. Just as an example, in 2018, Home Depot had net income margins of 10%, and clearly Lowe's is well behind them. Now, I wouldn't expect for Lowe's or Home Depot for that matter, or any retailer, to be as high as something like Microsoft, which was almost 30% in 2018, or Apple, which was a bit over 20% in 2018. So staying focused on Lowe's, Lowe's, okay, fine, they're trailing Home Depot, which is a negative thing that they're trailing, but the positive thing is that they are in fact growing their net income margins. That likely explains why profits are increasing at a faster rate than revenue is. And there's probably some upside if Home Depot is in the 9 or 10% area, Lowe's probably has the potential at least to get to that same area. And this brings us to some recent developments in Lowe's business that could help explain what they're doing to improve margins and what the plan is looking out at least the next few years. So this is a list of the upper management of Lowe's. And when we add how many years they've been there, well, Clearly, we can see this is a fairly new management team. Now, broadly speaking, the early results from this new management team looks promising. They're doing a few things that has the potential to help Lowe's grow and ultimately to try to get Lowe's stock to move higher and hopefully keep their dividend growing for the next few years. First, management is closing a bunch of underperforming stores, both in Mexico, which they're pretty much getting out of all completely, and uh, some in Canada, some in the United States. To illustrate the pace that the current management team is closing stores versus the previous management team, this chart goes back to August of 2017 on a quarterly basis. And I'm sure we can guess, this is the amount of stores that have been closed in each quarter. And I'm sure we can guess where the new management team got involved. That's right there. Now, personally, I think this is a good move. I think that every business should occasionally do some, let's call it spring cleaning, and keep the business performing as efficiently as possible. Along these same lines, management, the new management team, has also stated their intentions to improve both the supply chain and inventory management, which are two crucial things in any retail business. Both of these have the potential to further improve margins. The other financial metric that would also be affected by these company-wide changes is free cash flow. This is a chart of free cash flow going back to 2012 and also includes four years of analyst estimates. Now, when it comes to the 2019 numbers, well, here I think it's important to point out that the first three quarters of 2019 are already in the books. We're just waiting for the fourth quarter to end, and I believe their fourth quarter ends in February of each year. That, that's when their fiscal year ends. So right now, they're still operating in the 2019 fiscal year, even though we're already in 2020. That's the reason that this is an estimate. 
But either way, we can see that there's a big drop off expected in 2019 and there already has been. And clearly it makes sense to have a dip in free cash flow since management is expecting to spend more than a billion and a half dollars in 2019 on capital expenditures alone to ultimately try to improve the business. These expenses would reduce free cash flow. But then once this is done, analysts seem to be expecting overall that free cash flow will continue to move higher. So this brings us to the question, what do we think Lowe's stock is worth today? Okay, so the first method I tried to value Lowe's stock was the dividend discount model. Now, I made somewhat conservative estimates for the dividend amount. I actually took uh, the last quarter of 2019 and then the first three quarters of 2020, and I came out with about $2.30 estimated for their dividend. Now, even if that's a bit conservative, it doesn't matter all that much because we came up with a fair value of about $66 per share. Now, considering that Lowe's stock is currently trading at about $120 per share, clearly this doesn't give us too much useful information. Now, one of the reasons, at least in the case of Lowe's, that this, the dividend discount model, would be so far off from the current value of the stock is that this doesn't account at all for the growth of the, the margins of the business, the growth of the business. That only focuses on the dividend, what the dividend means to the investor. Clearly, margin improvements and growth assumptions are tied to the overall stock price as well, and they seem to be improving, which is really driving the stock higher. So I also think it's helpful to use a discounted cash flow valuation method as well. So I won't spend too much time on how I did this calculation. I did a whole video on how to do this calculation where you can get the numbers, all of that. I even created an Excel spreadsheet, uh, like a, a template. If you're curious, there's a link in the description below for that video to walk you through how we did that. But basically, here's what I did. I took analyst estimates from up here, and th that's the same numbers we saw in the free cash flow chart from before. We discounted those free cash flow numbers by an 8.5% required rate of return. A perpetual growth rate we projected out using a perpetual growth rate of 2.5%. And ultimately, that gave us a fair value of about $110 for a uh, fair value of the company of about $110 per share. Now, once again, Lowe's is trading at about $120 a share, which would imply that Lowe's stock is slightly overvalued at this current level. So I think it makes sense to wait for a pullback in Lowe's stock before we get involved with it. Now, I'm actually a big fan of Lowe's business in general, and I really like the changes that management is making. And even if Lowe's can get anywhere near the margin levels of Home Depot, well, I would expect for, I would expect that Lowe's stock has potential to really explode. But on a personal basis, I, th I don't think it makes a lot of sense to overpay for the company at this point. Now, if you're curious what level is typically a good level to buy the stock, well, I actually did a video on uh, looking at the fair value of the stock. And when we use something like discounted cash flow, when we come up with a fair value, well, is that the place we buy it or should we buy it someplace below that? Generally, we want to add a margin of safety to that. And I did a video called when to buy a stock and that goes into the process behind when's the best place to buy a stock like this. If you're curious about that, well, that could be a good next video for you to watch. There's a link here. There's a link in the description below. And thank you so much for sticking with me all the way to the end of the video. I really appreciate it. Thanks. And I'll see you in the next video.